Good morning, and welcome to Bethany United Methodist Church, where we are leading people to experience God's love, to know Jesus Christ, and to grow in his image. My name is Sherry Clifton. I'm one of the pastors here at Bethany. I'm delighted that you're worshiping with us from wherever you may be. As we begin our worship today, I want to remind you that you can go to our church's website at any time to find out more information about Bethany, about how you can get connected with us, about how you can continue to support Bethany with your financial gifts, and also how we can be in prayer for you and with you. As we begin our time of worship today, I invite you to take a deep breath, to welcome God's spirit where you are, and let us pray. Holy and loving God, thank you for the gift of this day, for this time of worship in which we can remember who you are and who we are, in which we can remember the depth of your love for us in Jesus Christ. We pray that you would guard our hearts and our minds in this time of worship, that we wouldn't be distracted by the world around us, but that we would allow ourselves the gift of this time in your presence. Hear our prayers as we begin this time, as you pour out your spirit upon us to worship you. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Our first scripture this morning comes from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 12, verses 28 to 31. I invite you to listen with me for God's word to us today. One of the scribes came near and heard them disputing with one another, and seeing that he answered them well, he asked him, which commandment is the first of all? Jesus answered, the first is, hear, O Israel, The Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. If you're comfortable doing so, I invite you to close your eyes, to take a deep breath, and to listen again. And listen for a word or a phrase or an image that speaks to you where you are this day. 
One of the scribes came near and heard them disputing with one another. And seeing that he answered them well, he asked him, which commandment is the first of all? Jesus answered, the first is, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. As you hold on to whatever word or phrase or image speaks to you today where you are, I invite you to listen one more time. And this time, as you are able, offer your response to God. One of the scribes came near and heard them disputing with one another. And seeing that he answered them well, he asked him, Which commandment is the first of all? Jesus answered, The first is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. This is the word of our Lord. Thanks be to God. As we move into a time of prayer, I invite you to spend just a moment with God, naming your joys and concerns, offering your heart, your mind to God, believing that God is present with you. Spend a moment praying out loud or silently, and then I will pray for us all.
loving God, we hear you say that we are to love you with all that we are and all that we have, and we struggle. And we hear you say that we are to love our neighbor as ourselves, and we struggle with that too. So many things vie for our attention, our affection, our resources. Sometimes the struggle is to love you, Lord. Sometimes the struggle is to love our neighbor. Sometimes the struggle is to love ourselves. We pray that in the midst of the distractions and the challenges, you would help us lean into and hold on to love, your love for us, demonstrated in Christ's selfless love for the least, the last, and the lost, demonstrated in your mercy and kindness that finds us in the midst of our brokenness, demonstrated in your faithful provision for us for the journeys that are ours. Today we pray not only that we would receive your love more fully, but also that we would willingly love others more fully, even as you help us know how to best love ourselves as your beloved children. Remind us today in ways that are clear to us how precisely and perfectly you see us, you know us, you love us. And help us to trust you more and more with each passing day. Lord, in this world where discord and division both fuel and are fueled by hatred and violence, give us hearts willing to love as you love, to see as you see, to hear as you hear, to be present as you are present. Give us courage to be the body of Christ in word and in deed, so that Christ may be known and experienced through us. Hear our prayers today. Our prayers for healing of our bodies, our hearts, and our minds. Our prayers for healing of relationships and communities and our nation. Prayers of restoration and renewal of our hearts and our minds. Prayers for courage and prayers for peace in the midst of all that is uncertain around us. Renew our hope today, our hope in the risen Christ, and breathe new life into us, that we might pray with confidence in your goodness, your faithfulness, and your steadfast love, even as we pray the prayer Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
Our second scripture today comes from the Apostle Paul's letter to the Philippians, chapter 2, verses 1 to 11. If then there is any encouragement in Christ, any consolation from love, any sharing in the Spirit, any compassion and sympathy, make my joy complete. Be of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility regard others as better than yourselves. Let each of you look not to your own interests, but to the interests of others. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father." As you're comfortable doing so, I invite you to close your eyes, to take a deep breath, and just to consider how God is speaking to you in this text. Listen to verses 1 to 4 again. If then there is any encouragement in Christ any consolation from love, any sharing in the spirit, any compassion and sympathy, make my joy complete. Be of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility regard others as better than yourselves. Let each of you look not to your own interests, but to the interests of others. For a moment, I invite you to consider your interactions from this past week with your loved ones, with your coworkers, with your neighbors, with people in the community, with your brothers and sisters in Christ. Are there any of those interactions that stick out for you as being challenging? What were the circumstances around those interactions? Can you, will you, for these moments of meditation, try to simply be the observer of those interactions? With Jesus standing next to you, observing the same interactions and circumstances, no judgment, Just observation. As you and Jesus observe those circumstances, maybe you were in the right. Maybe you have all the facts about what happened. Maybe the other person was wrong. And maybe... Maybe there's more to the interaction when you can see it with Jesus standing beside you. Maybe, even with all of the objective data, there is a relational breach that God invites you to see. With all compassion and kindness toward yourself, as an opportunity for you to lean into what it might mean in very practical ways for you to have the mind of Christ. When you consider whatever interaction came to mind for you, whatever person came to mind for you, What do you hear Jesus saying to you in this time? As you and Jesus 
Observe the interaction. Observe the challenge. What do you hear Jesus saying to you in this time? Is there any action for you to take in your relationship with Jesus? Is there any action for you to take in your relationship with the other person or persons? How might choosing to have the mind of Christ help a similar interaction to be different in the future? Spend a moment listening to Jesus, speaking to Jesus with regard to this. Let us listen again to Paul's words to the Philippians, to Paul's words to us. If then there is any encouragement in Christ, any consolation from love, any sharing in the spirit, any compassion and sympathy, make my joy complete. Be of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility regard others as better than yourselves. Let each of you look not to your own interests, but to the interests of others. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. This is the word of our Lord. Thanks be to God.
As we go from this time of worship today, I invite you to continue checking the church's website for updated information about how you can be connected with us here at Bethany, how we can continue to be praying with you and for you, how you can continue supporting the ministries of Bethany United Methodist Church. As we go forth from this time of worship, I invite you also to, know, to go knowing how deeply God loves you. Go in the love of God. Go knowing and being assured of God's deep love for you. And go in the grace and the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that grace that covers us and that peace that passes all of our understanding. And go in the power and fellowship of the Holy Spirit, knowing that you do not go alone, that you are empowered to live as one who is known by Christ, one who knows Christ, and one who seeks to have the same mind as Christ. Go in peace. Amen. Oh